from High Technology, the computer store. Introducing Apple II, the easy to operate home computer. expected to sell $300 million worth of personal computer equipment in 1981, double that in 1982, double that the year after. Industry experts say we're no longer on the verge of the personal computer revolution. We're right in the midst of it, thank you. And when you use the term a personal computer, you're deliberately avoiding the, the use of the term home computer, aren't you? Right. We, um, we view the home not really as a market yet. We view it more as a location. Uh, we sell a lot of personal computers that are used for financial analysis, for education in schools, uh, for running laboratory experiments in, you know, in universities and in, in scientific applications. And a lot of these personal computers are used in the home as a location uh, some of the time. But there's not enough specific applications to cost justify spending $1,000 to $3,000 for a personal computer to be used in the home yet. Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Now I'd like to show you Macintosh in person. Today, for the first time ever, I'd like to let Macintosh speak for itself. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. And it's just come that I am too public speaking, I'd like to share with you a maxim I thought of the first time I made an IBM mainframe. Never trust a computer you can't with. Obviously, I can talk, but right now, I'd like to sit back and listen. So it is with considerable pride that I introduce a man who's been like a father to me, Steve Jobs. This is a Macintosh personal computer. This is an ordinary PC. This is the world's easiest personal computer. This is an ordinary PC. This is the world's most advanced personal computer. This is an ordinary PC. Today, we're pleased to announce that this costs less than this. Having embarked on a new career at the age of 45, Kareem found himself traveling in coach. At least his hands were comfortable.
Sleep Power Book is designed to fit the way you work. Power Book from Apple. The idea behind Newton is that it's an assistant, something that actively helps you as you capture, organize, and communicate your ideas and information. The possibilities are just limitless. When you think about it, the most natural way to get your thoughts down is to jot or to sketch. We wanted Newton to be that natural. Say you're on a train or a plane or at a little cafe. You can write a fax. Say you want to send that fax to Margaret. You just highlight Margaret's name in the text, tap fax. And Newton will automatically fill out a fax cover sheet with Margaret's number on it. We've built in Newton intelligence so that Newton knows enough about what you're trying to do to help you do it. Hey, Dolph, take a memo on your Newton. Beat up Martin. Bah! With all the fanfare of a Hollywood premiere, Apple Computer debuts its latest production, the Power Macintosh. Based on the Power PC chip that it developed along with Motorola and arch rival IBM, Apple hopes the Power Macintosh can take 5% of the PC market from the leading chip maker, Intel. How is the Power PC chip different from Intel's top of the line Pentium processor? The Power PC uses a reduced instruction method to perform complex calculations. Apple says that means the Power PC should be able to work faster and cheaper than the Pentium. And for the Pentium, now it's just starting. It's been 10 years since Macintosh debuted with its famous 1984 commercial. Mm -hmm. Analysts say now is the time for Apple to move into the future. A future some say is staked on the new chip. Apple President Michael Spindler puts it another way. You can move to Power Macintosh now or you can move later. Apple has always attempted to bring out technologies that are easy to use. And this remains our objective and our major differentiation in the world of client-server. We apply technology in a way that hides complexity so that you can build systems that fit in first into an environment and then just as importantly enables you to deliver tools that people can use naturally without having to think about the tools themselves. Uh, we are ramping the global volume much faster because we are a global business. We've been able to get much more productivity out of our R&D investment, and our field organizations are doing a terrific job of giving us uh, strong momentum in the marketplace. So it is working. Macintosh is strong. It's our core business today. It will be in the future. And we couldn't even think about going into some of the new ventures that we're interested in unless we had strength in our core business. Yeah. Uh, what are the gains? Along with the application, we also got this, this uh, guy named Steve Jobs. I would like, at this time, to invite Steve out. I would like to invite Steve out and uh, have him show you a little bit about what he's been doing for the last decade. Steve? We don't predict our financials. Yeah. I, I think that there's a lot of things changing at Apple right now. And um, some are going to show up in the financials positively. Some are going to show up in the financials negatively. And I think that we're going to get to a new trend. Uh, but that new trend will not become evident for another quarter or so. Um, so I, I really don't think it helps to predict right now. I think we have a very clear target on where we're going in that regards. And we think profitability is very, very important. What I said was that we examined the, the future product roadmap, not the products that are shipping today, the future ones that we were working on. And what we found was that 30% of them were incredibly good. 
and about 70% of them were either pretty good or things that we didn't really need to be doing, businesses we really didn't need to be in. And so we've pared a lot of that back so we could focus the same amount of original resource even more on what was remaining and add a few new things in. So the resources that we're investing are equal or greater than we have been, but it's on fewer things, so we're going to do the, a better job at them, I think. There are not going to be any uh, corporate massive layoffs. Uh, what we're doing is we have, a, I think, a pretty clear direction now, and each group uh, is looking at the work plans to do what they need to do to, to, to accomplish the, the, the pieces of that that they have to do. And we are reorganizing some things a little bit differently, combining things in a few different ways. And in some cases, when the music stops, there'll be some people that don't have a chair. Where we are right now is we're shepherding some of the greatest assets in the computer industry. And if we want to move forward and see Apple healthy and prospering again, we have to let go of a few things here. We have to let go of this notion that for Apple to win, Microsoft has to lose, okay? Microsoft is making an investment in Apple. Microsoft is buying $150 million worth of Apple stock at market price. It is non-voting shares, and they've agreed... and they've agreed not to sell them for at least three years. So what this means is, is that Microsoft is going to be part of the game with us as we restore this company back to health, have a vested interest in that stock price going up. We're gonna be working together on Microsoft Office, on Internet Explorer, on Java and I think that uh, it's going to lead to a, a very healthy relationship. So I happen to have a special guest with me today uh, via satellite downlink, and uh, if we could uh, get him up on the stage right now. Good morning. Some of the most exciting work that I've done in my career has been the work that I've done uh, with Steve on the Macintosh, uh, whether it's the first introduction uh, or doing products like Mac Excel. Uh, these have been major milestones. And it's very exciting to renew our commitment uh, to the Macintosh. Would, uh like to take the privilege of showing you what they're going to look like from today on. This is iMac. This is iMac. The whole thing is translucent. You can see into it. It's so cool. We've got <laughs> stereo speakers on the front. We've got infrared right up here. We've got the CD-ROM drive right in the middle. We've got dual stereo headphone jacks. We've got the coolest mouse on the planet right here. Come on around. All of the connectors are inside one beautiful little door here, the Ethernet, the USB stuff. Around the back, we've got a really great handle here. The back of this thing looks better than the front of the other guys, by the way. <laughs> and then around the side. So let's take one more, one more swing around it so you can see. This is what it looks like. And again, you've got to see one of these things in person. Great. <laughs> like it's from another planet, and a good planet, <laughs> a planet with better designers. Look at this keyboard. It's so nice. Two universal serial bus connectors on either side, so you can plug the mouse into whichever one you want, whether you're right or left-handed, and you have the other one for peripherals. Look at this mouse. It's the most, it's the, it's the most wonderful mouse you've ever used. The, the field that we decided to do it in, the choice we made, was music. Now, why music? Well, we love music, and it's always good to do something you love. 
More importantly, music's a part of everyone's life. Everyone. Music's been around forever. It will always be around. This is not a speculative market. And because it's a part of everyone's life, it's a very large target market all around the world. It knows no boundaries. But interestingly enough, in this whole new digital music revolution, there is no market leader. That is where we want to be. And we are introducing a product today that takes us exactly there. And that product is called iPod iMac, iBook, iPod. That's iPod. I haven't had one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. <laughs> there it is, right there. So, this amazing little device holds a thousand songs, and it goes right in my pocket. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> no. Actually, here it is, but we're going to leave it there for now.